We've all had those days where we just sit down, do some solves hoping to improve and not improve at all. Hey guys, it's the Cube Syndrome here. Today I'll be sharing some useful practice techniques which are guaranteed to make you improve if you do them correctly. I will firstly go over some of the beginner techniques that I am sure that everyone is aware of, and then I will move on to the more advanced techniques. So to begin, I'm fairly certain everyone watching this video has tried slow turning before, so I won't spend too much time on this. For those who are unfamiliar with this technique, it is basically your ordinary 3x3 solve, but you are turning much slower than you normally would. This technique is pretty self-explanatory and basic, but what I do need to stress is that the point of slow turning is to eliminate pauses mainly in the F2L stage and improve your look ahead. Slow turning gives you time to actually react to certain cases, look around the cube, and develop skills useful for fluidity. If you're turning slow and you're still pausing, then what's the point? So to get the most out of this technique, what you have to do is start extremely slow, maybe at 1 or 2 turns per second. Then you can gradually get faster once you are comfortable with not pausing at all. One way to keep your turns consistent is actually to use a metronome. Anyways, you will gradually get faster and hopefully reach your original turning speed. Next, I'm going to go over another technique that will greatly improve your look ahead, and it's doing certain steps of the cube blindfolded. You can do the cross blindfolded by simply trying to do it in the fewest moves possible. If you keep practicing that, then you should eventually be able to solve the entire cross blindfolded. The reason this is so beneficial is that after doing the practice technique, you won't ever have to look at the cross ever again while you're solving. Thus, you can trap your first f 2 l pair for a quick cross to f 2 l transition. You can also practice doing f 2 l pairs blindfolded. Doing one should be pretty simple, but it gets more difficult when you try to do two, as you have to predict where the pieces of your second pair will be after you do the first one. This is something that I struggle with a lot, but when you get it down, it will be extremely useful. Your f 2 l will get fast, because not only can you not look at the pair you're doing, but you can do the second one as well. Now to practicing TPS, and no way this is more apparent than in OLO and PLO. For these stages, you should stick to an algorithm that you think is the fastest and is most comfortable for you. Then you can draw the algorithm over and over again to get faster at it. You recognize the points of the algorithm where you choke, and when you drill, you can work hard to eliminate that pause. TPS can also be useful in F2L, but you have to remember that this comes after look ahead and efficiency. If you're up to the point where you're focusing on TPS for F2L, you must be a pretty advanced solver. Something that should be considered in last layer is recognition. So you've drawn your algorithms and let's say you can sub 1 all of your PLLs. Well there's no point to having the skills to execute the algorithms that fast if you take a full 2 seconds to recognize it. That's why I suggest you take a quick look at the two-sided PLL recognition. Familiarize yourself with how the PLL cases look from different angles and that will help you out a lot. Lastly, if you get competition nerves, practice in front of real human beings instead of your computer. So that's all the tips I have for you guys today. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. If you haven't, feel free to dislike and leave a comment saying why. See you all in the next video.